right, welcome to today's episode of Tomorrow's Leader, where we dive deep on all things leader-related, related to leading yourself and leading others. I'm John Larito, your host with a great guest today. I've got Sean Tarter, who is the founder and president of Real Time Reservation, uh, and he is based in New York. So, Sean, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, John. Pleasure to be here. Yeah, real pleasure. I know we were chatting about your business. I'm really fascinated about the concept of Real Time Reservation because as you're explaining it to me, I'm like, wow, that's definitely a need I could see and I've had in the past for the audience that's listening. Why don't you share a little bit about the company, what you do and what your inspiration was for getting it started? Yeah, so uh, Real Time Reservation is an integrated uh, pre-arrival hub for guests and for uh, hotel staff to book everything from amenities to activities to cabanas, really all rentable structures and events. Um, really all the property has to offer uh, before they actually uh, get onto property. Uh, so we've really been white labeled into the hotels um, e-commerce platform uh, for years now. Uh, mm -hmm. We work very closely with our hotel partners to really understand the challenges, the demands of all this ancillary revenue opportunities, uh, but really focusing on, on three main areas, John, and that's the, the opportunity to have enhanced guest experience. Um, operations control, especially with the staffing issues that are happening today in hospitality. And then, of course, higher hotel revenue. It's been a big focus, and we have a, a, a really great strategy for hotels to, to jump on board and participate. That's great. So, and are you domestic only or international? Yeah, we've, we've been really fortunate um, to do it the right way, so to speak. So, we have all the corporate um, and brand um, approvals and master agreements. So we work with those global brands and we're everywhere now uh, from a global perspective, um, especially during COVID where um, everyone needed help and, and the global uh, outreach for the brands have been limited. There's been uh, only a few people left at the hotel brands to really expand this out. Mm -hmm. um, so you're really dealing with one person or three people that represent globally the largest brands in the world. And we've teamed up with them to figure out solutions, especially bring people back to the hotels. Um, you know, imagine a, you know, a, a situation now where uh, not only are all your customers shut down, but the way that the hotel guests get to those hotels is shut down, um, how they actually bring people back in a safe manner. So a lot of work was done to expand globally mm -hmm. and to get into every language we can get into. So we have all the languages, all the abilities, all the integrations into the hotels. And now it's what could the hotel offer with capacity control now? Because you have a yoga class now with only maybe six people in it, mm -hmm. but there's four of them on the property. So really, how do you do that effectively? Um, and then after um, COVID, hopefully, is uh, it's waning a little bit, and we see people coming back to the industry, which is really exciting. Uh, really, how do you deal with not only capacity now, but now different opportunities that develop, mm. different partnerships out there? So yeah. you see a lot of work that will come so, out right now in terms of brands and partnerships and yeah. inspiring people to travel again. Yeah. So the concept is, if I'm taking a vacation with my family, then I am not only booking the hotel, but I have the opportunity to book you know, massages or cabanas or restaurant reservations, anything that's part of the hotel experience. Is that right? Ahead of time. So I go there, peace of mind and knowing yeah. that I've got it all set up. Yeah. And, and really, how do we, how do we help the hotel with their staffing issues as well? You know, this was something even on the luxury guest side where you really want to make sure that not only you speak to someone, but that you have a confirmation email or, or a text message letting you know that you actually have this activity booked. Um, and things like that, where we would say, you know, before COVID, about 75% of guests were booking online, and now it's 95% or higher, wow. booking every activity when they get to the property. Wow. Um, and now because of that, the hotels realize that with our software, they could book packages and they could book all these types of add-ons to everything they could think of. So you create this real custom experience. Now that the world has adapted more to yeah. online everything. Wow. Such as Zoom call today. So everything's online. So what about things like tours and excursions that you might book through the concierge? Is that part of it as well? Yeah. So we worked uh, very closely with partnerships with those tours and excursion companies. Um, you really have a one-stop shop when it comes to everything that we're doing. Yeah. And creating this hub allows you to book everything from spa to whatever it might be to activities, cabanas, uh, all in one place. Wow. And for the hotel side, it's dealing with one vendor. Uh, we hear a lot of words like vendor fatigue. Um, so by really working with them, getting approved through the brands, uh, getting the asset managers and owners to understand the value, um, that's been a really big push. And, and we've grown substantially uh, during COVID and out of COVID just based on those, on those concepts. Oh, that's great. I love it. I could have used uh, your services in April. I booked a uh, trip. I went, took my kids to Hawaii, Maui, phenomenal place, loved it. But I had told them about all these excursions that I want to take them on. We got there and they were booked because 
of COVID. They had downsized the number of people, the number of excursions. We ended up having a blast and we did some excursions, but I could have gone through and used real-time reservation, ultimately had all that stuff planned weeks, if not months in advance is what I'm understanding. Yeah, and, and we're, we're heavily into Hawaii. Um, it's been a big, uh, it's been great since the airlines have started flying again. It's been great to see Hawaii and we're heavily in Hawaii and and, and obviously uh, throughout the US and the Caribbean and, and, and globally. But in Hawaii, it's really been a, a real big leadership. It's always been the opportunity to develop things for honeymoon and for family events ahead of time. Um, candlelight dinners, things that we've set up before COVID. And now because of COVID, all of a sudden now you're planning your your dinners. It might be a romantic dinner outside you know, on the beach, but now it also might be for family. Uh, we also got heavily involved in luau's and all different types of things in Hawaii specifically. But really, you know, it's every every region has their own concept of a candlelight dinner, picnic lunch, really something to pre-reserve, to, to reserve ahead of time. And we just think very special with the hotels is that we actually uh, connect to their merchant ID, to their credit card system. Um, we've done it the right way through the approvals, through all the PCI compliance stuff with the brands, and they tell us how to do it right. But because you've done it right, the hotels are now receiving the money ahead of time. They're not waiting for us to send them a wire or some vendor that might not be in business tomorrow. They're actually doing things with us as a partnership. So their guests are paying them money. Uh, we see a lot of things with some vendors that maybe not, you know, not, not the correct way, um, but they actually would, would hold the money. And, and when that happens during COVID, they're using that money to survive as a vendor mm -hmm. and the hotel's like, where's my, where is it? So we believe in a real partnership with really getting into the hotel systems, understanding how they work and to make sure the hotel is getting the guest revenue up front. Mm -hmm. And also they can create cancellation policies and all these wonderful things that you could do. Yeah. With all these I love it. So it's better for the hotel, better for the guests. It's a win-win all the way around. So yeah. I, I know you, uh, Obviously, you know, success of a business is not just the product or the service, but it's the leadership behind it. You and I were talking a little bit about this earlier about some of the things that has helped make you successful. I'd love to talk a little bit about that. And, and you one of the things you started off talking about was the importance of people. Um, what's how much is that? What specifically has impacted your organization and what's your what specifically about people and how you think about building an organization? Do people need to know? Yeah, you know, I, I think the secret to really building building a winning team, so to speak, you know, is that each employee should feel like they're contributing to the success of the organization, uh, and that's really been a big part of it. They should feel appreciated. Our team works long hours. I work long hours, um, but you're building towards this this dream, I mean, and you're dreaming together, and that's a big part of it. Um, and it's also really important of who you hire. Um, I noticed that. Um, when you hire not just smart people, but we really put an effort to hire kind people. And that's really been a secret to, to what we've done is really bring in, in kind folks that are also very smart because we have a good product. Um, but then when you're speaking to our clients, they know that they have a company that really prides itself on integrity and partnership. And we saw a lot of that during COVID as well. We had a lot of uh, hotels and even even the people, you know, working at hotels that we've gotten to know, gotten, gotten to know personally over the years. And now they're like, what do I do? I don't have a I don't have a job anymore. What do I do? And it's those kind of personal levels that we've really been attracted to as a company. And when you hire the right mix of people, even as you expand, then it's hard to hire as you scale because you have rapid growth and you have to bring on the right people, the right mix all the time. Um, but I'd say that, you know, and really a message to everyone is hire kind people because that's who people look at when they do business with you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great point. You know, and I don't think many leaders think about that. If they if you list it out, OK, what are the attributes that you look for when you're hiring people that might not even make it on their list? But you found that that's that's really one of the, 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 the glue that holds the place together. I mean, in reality, it bonds the team, but it also leads to a much better client experience, no doubt. Yeah. Yeah, I like it. And it, what is what are some of the things that, I mean, when you when you think about building the organization, because you talked about scaling, that's without a doubt a huge challenge for people, for organizations. When you've scaled, you've had to scale pretty quickly. I understand you built the start, started business eight years ago. The last three years has really been, sounds like pretty exponential growth. Um, how, how as a leader do you do that? I mean, what are you thinking about? What are the things, the mistakes that you see or that you've made, maybe made when it comes to scaling either too fast or not fast enough? Yeah, so I mean, you know, 
we've we've spent uh, you know really years really on the ground, um, not even looking at revenue numbers, just really looking at understanding the industry. Um, you know, about three years ago is really when uh, we started to to push really hard forward. Uh, because the corporate, uh, you know, global brands have asked us to do it. And that was really the exciting part. So it's really been, you know, years on the ground, years working with the actual teams of folks on the recreation side and the concierge side, just to understand what, what they're looking for. And a lot of it, it's not even technology. So when you look at building a, a building an organization, but as we're building us now, um, a lot of it was more about strategy, really creating partnerships. Our sales guy, and we just went to a, a very large uh, convention. We're really the first one actually with them in, in Fort Lauderdale this past week. Um, and, you know, when you talk about scaling and how to still do it, um, I still go back to, you know, finding people that are kind. You know, it's it's, uh, it's just the overlooked kind of uh, kind of part to, it's not on the resume. You don't see that on the resume that people are kind. You see all the accomplishments. Um, we were fortunate to work with some of the best people. Our staff is the most talented, such a history, but each one of them. Um, and one of our sales folks is down with me in, in, in Fort Lauderdale. And I overhear him talking, you know, I'm overhearing him say this. And he says, you know, he says to one of the people he's speaking to, he's like, all I have is my name. And this is an extremely accomplished sales guy. Um, and that's what he says, all I have is my name. And, and we're dealing with, um, or one of the vendors said to me, um, you know, uh, how do I know you're going to deliver this? How do I know you're actually going to deliver what you say you're going to deliver? And I say, yeah. I'm the owner. If I don't deliver it, you're going to ask me why I didn't deliver this. And I'm in here for the long haul. And I think that's the biggest thing. I'm in here for, for a long time. We're not going anywhere. And we have the right people to progress whatever it is the challenge sees in the industry. And however, we're seeing it. Obviously, COVID, we did some hard pivots there um, with, our, with our hotel partners. But it's really building the right team around you, scaling with the same concept of integrity, uh, getting super smart people in one place. And the idea is partnership. You have to be able to partner with your, your, your customer and to know what they're looking for. And then for us, we kind of hand it over to them and they build our product for us. Uh, there's no, there's no ego walking into the door. There's not, you know, this is our product and do it. We're constantly learning um, our sales folks to our relationship guys, to our developers. We're all kind of on the same page of building something out that means something uh, to the industry, but also to the, customers of our customers and that's a big part of this yeah i can see that and and as you've grown have you found is it harder to keep that kind of culture and everything the way that you want it to i mean i would imagine as your organization gets bigger everything you did to start the organization and hiring everybody you've got your hands on everything but you got to let go a little bit as the as the leader when you're it's going a little bit getting big and fast getting big fast have you ran, run into problems or challenges with that yeah, you know, I um, you know, we, we have a really good group, um, and I think that um, we all of us, every level of the organization, they really um, feel the same way. Um, the challenges that you mentioned, especially during COVID, um, something I've never seen before. And and the challenge you really have is how do you hire the right people, and possibly not even meeting those people that you're hiring. How do you hire someone over a Zoom call? How do you really do that? Point. Um, and then you finally meet for the first time you have, we had our, our first company event and I don't know how long, mm -hmm. and, uh, we were all together and you see, uh, um, a marketing person meeting a salesperson for the first time and they're, and they're hugging each other. And, and you're like, yeah, I don't know if they're allowed to hug each other anymore. <laughs> um, but they can't believe this. And you see someone on the, on a zoom call, like we're doing today and you kind of feel like, you know, the person, but you don't know how tall they are. You don't know how yeah. they really, you know, how they move, how they walk across the room and then all of a sudden you see someone and you have this enjoy enjoyment look the, the reality is you have to be a successful company to get the benefits of people really enjoying working together mm -hmm. it really all is driven by a good product good um a, a good ambition in the industry solving a real problem out there um so you have to have that piece in there but once you do you really don't want to take any shortcuts you want to hire the right mix of people it's a lot harder to do that um it's easier to say, I want to hire this senior person in the industry. Um, it's an easier road, um, but it's not as organic. There's something that you're missing there. Um, and we have a great mix of folks. We have some people that have been around the industry for a very, very long time, real influential folks as well. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. But it's hiring the right mix of senior people, junior people. Um, I also think that get involved with your local university. Mm -hmm. I think that um, we're, we're, we're on Long Island. We're reaching out to, to Stony Brook and some of these great universities in Hofstra. And really seeing, you know, what's it like for, for, for those students coming out really across the board from developers, 
future marketing folks, future business folks, the future leaders. Um, and I also say, you know, hire people better than you, uh, hire people that can really bring you on. Um, we know we're going to lose people to start their own business eventually. And those are the people that I want to be with because they are leaders, they are partners, and they kind of understand that there's, um, you know, there, there's something at the end of the day where you're accountable. Uh, all of our hotel partners are that we're accountable for something. So if something uh, isn't the way they want it, we have to fix it. And everyone across our team knows that we have to fix everything we create to make it really a great product for the hotel to use. Yeah. We don't want it just sitting there. We want them actually using it. Yeah. And especially with all this, you know, with, with COVID, all these pre-arrival opportunities, um, we're right there with the hotels creating a great product for, the, for their guests. I love it. I, uh, I know we only have a couple minutes. What is the vision that you have with real-time reservation? I mean, what does this look like five, 10 years from now? Yeah, uh, you know, so so the vision has always really been the same from the beginning. I know we started with cabanas. We started renting out structures. Um, we look at hotel uh, cabanas and opportunities as almost like hotel rooms, but they're not hotel rooms. Um, so we really built, um, you know, these, like, I guess, miniature hotel rooms as a cabana. And then you do yield management, really all opportunities for revenue uh, for the hotels, also increasing their guest experience and looking at any kind of operation savings that you can do. Um, and once we started that, property started saying, can you also do the kids club for us? And can you manage the hotel shuttle for us? And can you do the fitness center um, and parking? Mm-hmm. And we really started getting involved in all areas of this and also integrating into those parking systems, the valet systems are integrated into our system. Yeah. Uh, some yeah. of the fitness centers are inter- integrated into our system as well. So you say, where do we expand this? We look at a holistic uh, pre-arrival <laughs> experience where the guests are booking everything um, possibly of SG hotel rooms right through our site and the hotel thinks it's part of their own experience. Yeah. So the hotel yeah. guests believes they go into the hotel site. They don't know we exist, but all these amazing things are being presented for them and they're able to book ahead of time. That's great. And the hotels, it's, it's their brand. It's affecting in a really positive way and the guests are having a great experience. You're obviously being rewarded because of the success of what you're doing in the business. Uh, but that's a perfect alignment of everybody's best interest. Yeah. And, and we also see a lot of the manual things that happen. We, we got heavily involved all of a sudden in accounting and finance, um, because we realize that everything impacts everything else. And when you bring in extra revenue, who's going to account for that revenue Yeah. and all the accounting teams and finance teams that you don't see at a beautiful resort in Hawaii that you went to, yeah. um, they're in a cubicle somewhere pushing numbers through and reporting through. Mm. And it's our job to make sure that doing it, they're doing it right, that we, that we're supporting them. So you have different levels of satisfying yeah. each part of your customer chain of, of workflow. That's great. Well, this has been terrific, Sean. I appreciate your time today. I know uh, realtimereservation.com is how people can get more information and we'll have it in the show notes. Is that right? That's the website? Yeah, that's perfect. All right. And we'll uh, make sure everybody has access to that. Uh, Without a doubt, check out realtimereservation.com. Sean, it's been a pleasure having you. It's been really uh, interesting as well as uh, impactful and congrats on the success. I'm not surprised about it and great idea, great leadership behind it. So Continued success to you. That's great. Thanks so much. And we see you on vacation pretty soon. I hope so. And thanks all of you for tuning in today on this uh, week's episode of uh, Tomorrow's Leader. Uh, As always, like, uh, share, subscribe. Always appreciate your ideas for future content and guests. And of course, go down below, give five-star review. And we'll look forward to uh, seeing you next time. Thanks, everybody. (music) 